In this video I wanted to cover using a reference track inside Reason. So reference tracks are super important in terms of uh, when you're ready to master your mix. Probably even before then if you want to copy the structure of a track that you like, where the breakdowns are and the build-ups and everything, you can you can mirror sort of the uh, structure of that track into your own while you're building the track and mixing it. But also when it comes to the mastering phase is making sure that you get it sounding as good as possible. So if you can't afford to send it to a mastering engineer, you know, you've got the luxury of bouncing it out with the stems or as a WAV and sending it off and letting somebody else do the work, then um, it's good to have a reference track in there just to make sure you're getting it sounding as good as you can as close to the ones that you're buying from your favorite labels. So I just wanted to share the way I'm doing it in my template inside Reason. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, stay tuned and I'll go through the setup that I'm using at the moment. Okay, so let's take a look at this template that I've been using for a number of years now. I've been tweaking pretty much uh, as often as I can to try and keep it fresh and current. Um, I'm going to do a separate session on the structure of this really and the colour coding and some of the approaches I have to organising the rack and the sequence of it. Uh, today we're going to just focus on um, having a reference in here. So uh, let's take a look at this then. So we've got standard sort of setup here in terms of the master section, send effects here. And then just beneath that, I've got this reference track that I've dropped in here. Okay, so again, in terms of length of the track, this is a blank template, so I'm slightly longer uh, in this case here. But that is uh, in there, ready to go. So uh, what I want to be able to do really is is play my track here and kind of A and B between my track and the, the reference. Now normally what I'll do is bounce out from here and I won't do any mastering in here. This will just be for mixing. And I'll bounce out to a separate session. You know, bounce out from here to a WAV uh, 24 bit and then pull that into a separate reason template that's just in the master section, got all my mastering uh, plugins. Uh, and the reference track will be set up in there, but I thought I'd drop it in here just to show uh, how you can do it from uh, the beginning if you want to, in terms of copying the structure uh, of the track that you're using for a reference. So if we take a look at the master section, as I say, normally in here you won't see some of these components that I use um, in the mixing uh, template. I may sprinkle one of these in here to clean up or something in a certain EQ range or whatever, but uh, normally it's pretty empty in here but what I've got in here and, and again I know there's multiple ways to do this but I'm just going to show you the way that I settled on uh, in here there's this plugins as you can see here the flower audio loudness meter you can do this in that alone uh, and I think there's one from um, let me have a look I can't remember the name of it I think it's in utilities it's called Pongo soft I think it's this AB audio uh, device here that you can get but anyway let's take a look how I've set this up then so um, in terms of the the wiring of this thing we've got let's start uh, kind of at the beginning so we've got this reference track that we've dropped in here and the outs of this are going up into this line mixer here into audio 2 so if I do the K to reduce the clutter a little bit um, you can see That if I highlight that particular reference track and do K, it kind of masks all the other wiring that's going on in there, so it stands out a little clearer. So the left and right outputs going into audio uh, two in on the line mixer, and then audio in one on the line mixer is coming directly from the master section, the master out. So again, if we highlight this and do a K, um, it, it hides some of the clutter, or even here. 
you can see exactly where that's wiring in there. So, and the reason for that is I don't want the reference track to go through the master section. I just want it to play, play as normal. So uh, let's take a look at this. One other little tweak I've done to this is, is in the master section here, I've, I've programmed this button here to be an A and B. So you can see button one here is configured to basically invert 0, 1, 1, 0 of channel one and channel two for, for solo. And if I collapse these up so you can see this happening, you can see if I play this at the moment, the master section is soloed here and the reference is muted out. So if we play it, you basically see the um, all the devices are firing here and they all end up going through uh, the flower loudness audio meter before it gets basically sent right up into the uh, audio IO here in the interface. So the good thing I can do here now is as if, uh, granted I've only just started this track, but uh, if I'd built this track and I was ready to get, you know start to master it, I, could, or I want to compare it to the structure of the uh, track that I've got as a reference, I can simply use the A and B button to switch. So what I'll do is I'll just choose a point in the track, play it, now if I press the AB button, you'll notice down here the switches. So you can quite easily switch between the two um, and, and listen to your reference. As I say, this is more this will be more set up in my mastering template, so it wouldn't be where I'm laying down the track and mixing it. You, you would find it in there. But um, that seems to work okay for me. Like I say, you can use this alone as a route. There's a reference button on the flyer audio as well, so you could route it different ways to use that. Or there's the Pongo Soft um, option that I referenced uh, earlier, which I've, I don't know when I got this. I don't know if I've used it, but I will take a look at it and see. But this seems to work out for me. So this. You know, this kind of setup just helps you when you're using a reference track to compare it to the one you're referencing quite easily while you're building your track. But also, like I say, I have this set up as well um, in my mastering template. If you found this video useful, um, please comment, let me know. Please subscribe to the channel. And I've also started a new page uh, and a Reason Music Production Group on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you want to get involved in some discussions around you, Reason, uh, join that group and uh, you'll see more of these videos and tips around uh, using Reason. Thanks. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down.